Hello, Hoopster here with another Rangers rumour roundup for you. We've got some good news to talk through, like the arrivals of young talents Kieran Morgan and Daniel Benny, as well as a very strong pre-season schedule starting to take shape. And we've also got some not so good news, like the fact that QPR will be playing in Spain behind closed doors, and more concerningly, that Marty Cifuentes is admired by Burnley as they search for a replacement for the outgoing Vincent Company. Let's get straight into it, and if you enjoyed the video, why not hit like and subscribe too? Starting off with our preseason schedule, which as I say is really starting to take shape, and reading aside, the calibre of opponent couldn't be further from our Austrian and League One jaunts of last summer. Our preparations begin on the 1st of July, with the first team squad flying out to Girona in the north of Spain for 11 days to play two fixtures both of which are currently unconfirmed, before returning to London on the 12th. Now the obvious downside here is that we won't be able to join them, with venue limitations being cited as the reason for both fixtures being played behind closed doors. That's just so QPR isn't it, to finally have a great pre-season destination, but the fans can't go along. I know obviously the priority here is the training of the squad and they're not going to be worried about where we fancy going on holiday, but so many fans would have been up for this and I think it would have got people even more hyped for the start of next season. The only thing that could make it worse is if that second unconfirmed team is Barcelona, which geographically it very much could be. The next confirmed slot is Spurs at home on Saturday the 20th of July. Another great selection and good to see we've got a good standard of opponent here. It would have been nice again if it was away at Spurs at their new shiny stadium, although I suppose Daniel Levy is probably busy loaning out to every Tom, Dick and Harry this summer. We then face Reading away a week later on Saturday the 27th of July and then Brighton at home on the 3rd of August, with the championship season then starting the following weekend. We played five pre-season matches last season, so I do wonder if we're going to try and squeeze in another one midweek somewhere along the way. But otherwise, this is looking like a really solid set of fixtures, quite similar to that last pre-season schedule we had under Mark Warburton when we played Man United at home. We're playing some good sides that play attractive football and should really put us through our paces before the season begins. And that's what happens when you have a proper manager in place teams want to come and play you, though I really wouldn't be surprised if Brighton are actually using this as a chance to get an early look at Marty Sefuentes as a possible future manager. And on that note, let's chat through the rumours that Mr Sefuentes is admired by Burnley as reported by The Athletic. Vincent Company, of course, has somehow been announced as Bayern Munich's new manager and the Clarets are left without a gaffer as they head into their first season back in the Championship. And apparently, alongside Carlos Corberan, Scott Parker and Liam Rosinha, Marty Sefuentes is on the list of managers being admired by their owners. You pull off the feat that Marty did last season and it is going to pick up some interested parties. The better a job your manager does and the more people are going to be interested. We saw that with Mick Bill. And if we start the season well under Marty and he is still around, it will keep happening throughout the season. There's really not too much more to this story right now and although he is also 10 to 1 on the betting odds for Leicester's next manager, I'm not really too concerned about these reports right now. Marty just doesn't strike me as the type of character that would do a Mick Bill and jump ship so early. Even if those clubs can improve his wages and the transfer budget at his disposal, I think he's going to want to build more with QPR at least for this season, see where he can take us and go about things in the right way. That's my calm take on it now for anyway, so let's see where we are in a week's time when these stories have started to really hot up. Now we also have two acquisitions in the development squad this week to talk through. The first being 18 year old defensive midfielder Kieran Morgan, who after 10 years with Tottenham Hotspur joins QPR. Morgan impressed for the R's on trial back in March, scoring in a 2-0 win for the under-18 side against Barnsley. He made 16 appearances for Spurs' development team this season, scoring two goals, playing either in the back line as a centre-back or more commonly as a holding midfielder. With a considerable number of players released from our development squad, it's interesting to see the kinds that we are picking up, and I'm intrigued to see how we handle these players over the coming season, in particular if we see more going out on loan or around the first team. Our second player signed for the development squad this week is 18-year-old forward Daniel Benny, who joins from Perth Glory. Our first player to join from the side since Nick Ward back in 2006. 
Benny grew up playing football in Hong Kong before moving to Perth in 2012, and he joined Perth Glory in 2021 and later went on to sign his first professional contract for the club in 2023, making his senior debut a week later in a pre-season friendly last summer against West Ham, topping it off with a lovely finish for their second goal of the match. Despite having only just turned 18 in April, Benny went on to play 25 out of 27 matches for Perth Glory in the A-League this season, scoring once and picking up three assists. He's flexible across the front line, playing an equal number of matches between left wing, right wing and up top. He's pacey, he likes to take players on and he has a high pressing intensity. And some note that although he is inconsistent and still raw, which you would expect for a player of his age, he's physically mature and composed on the ball. It may well be in the A-League, but this is ultimately an 18 year old that has been playing men's football for the past year. But if he's as promising as he sounds, I wouldn't be surprised to see him going out on loan or even get a couple of appearances in the cup. I think the most interesting thing about this signing is that we're looking as far afield as Australia, which is a considerable change in tact to what we've done over the past 10 years. And it's again evidence that things are being shaken up behind the scenes. Congratulations to both players for signing and I look forward to seeing how they both develop over the next year. That's it for today's update. If you've got any thoughts on the stories that I've discussed, then do let me know in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed this video, please do hit like and subscribe. It really helps me to grow the channel. Thanks very much and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.